Breaking and Entering by LeBron Keener Frida lived alone. She filled her days with odd hobbies, collecting forgotten trinkets and crafting peculiar art from discarded materials. Her garden, a chaotic mix of wild flowers and overgrown weeds, was her only connection to the world outside of home. The house in which she lived was small and outdated. It sat at the end of a street in a rather run-down part of the city, where the crime rate was very high. Despite the crumbling neighborhood, she found solace in her solitude. Each evening, she brewed tea that filled the air with the comforting aroma of chamomile. She was an eccentric old woman, a recluse, who had no desire for the company of people. One afternoon, as she stood in the kitchen cutting potatoes for the stew she was making, she noticed through the window a dark-haired young girl standing in the yard. She stared at the house mysteriously, and without a word, she seemed to be beckoning the old woman to come outside. Frida squinted against the afternoon sun to get a better look at the girl who appeared to be no older than twenty. She wiped off her hands, went to the door, and opened it. After stepping out onto the porch, she heard voices from around the house, voices much younger than that of herself, men's voices. The young girl was still standing in the yard where Frida had first seen her. It was a trap. Frida's heart raced as she recalled the stories she had heard. She had read about the local gangs that use young girls as decoys to get elderly people to come to the door. Once they were lured outside, gang members would rush them, rob them, knock them in the head, and in most cases, kill them. Frida quickly ran back inside and locked the door, pressing her back against it. Fear pulsed through her. Her old heart pounded as she listened, but the only sounds she could hear was her own heart and loud ringing in her ears. They were out there, just beyond the threshold on the other side of the wooden door. She knew they were there, but she had no idea what they would do next, which scared her more than anything. Are you sure she's in there? Said a man's voice. The doorknob shook beneath her hand. They were trying to get inside. She pulled the chain securely across the door and ran to the other end of the house. At the living room window, she peeked outside, and there in the yard was the young girl. She made a signal to someone Frida could not see. She was gesturing for them to come to that side of the house, and she was pointing at the very window where Frida had been looking out at her. She was holding an axe. Again, she ran as quickly as her frail body would run, which wasn't very fast. Stopping at the telephone on the kitchen wall, she grabbed it and waited for the dial tone. There was nothing but static in the phone line. She dialed 911 anyway, but the phone was dead. Has someone cut the wires? Trapped. Frida knew that she was trapped in her little home. And in a few minutes, she would be just as dead as the telephone. The kitchen door began to rattle. 
Oh my God, they were about to break in. She ran to her bedroom, closed the door, locked it, and laid down on the bed. Terrified, the old woman listened to the sound of wood splintering as they cut through the front door with the axe. She heard it finally give way, and then came the sound of footsteps within her home. They were talking, but she couldn't tell what they were saying. With her head upon her pillow, she put her fist in her mouth and quietly cried with fright while her heart raced and her ears continued to ring. The bedroom door shook. She heard them talking louder. I bet she's in here, said the girl. The doorknob rattled. She just laid upon the bed, helpless. There was nothing the poor old woman could do. With the axe, they began chopping through the door. Frida closed her eyes tightly. Chop, chop, chop. A hand reached inside through a hole in the door, unlocking it and in walked the girl with two policemen. They looked at Frida laying on the bed. There she is, said the young girl. They all covered their mouths with napkins. Frida had been dead for days.